Did Selene try to extort Nidhi Sanji? There's a document out there that claims that, and we're going to be going over this today. Here is the document we're going to be talking about today. It is from recently updated. It is Nidhi Sanji versus Selene analysis of their statements. Let's see what uh, they're talking about and if they have a specific side in this whole thing. They go through fully organized introduction, timeline analysis, two sets of documents, conflicting narratives, extortion during negotiations, likelihood of described scenario, and final remarks. This one makes me think they're against Selene, but we will take a look. They actually cite their sources uh, about the February 5th Selene termination documents. They put the actual statuses of Nidhi Sanji, along with all the Twitter stuff about termination tweets, the February 7th Dokeeper return stream, the February 12th return stream, the Illyra stream, everything that they want to mark here, they've already have as a prepared uh, chronological kind of like sources page. Pretty much. Introduction. This is an analysis of the statements of, from both Niji Sanji and Doki Bird, referred to as the primary sources as listed above. The statements were shared to the public between February 5th and February 14th and molded public perception during the ensuing drama. No extraneous sources are used for this analysis. Outside of one specific case for legal, legal exemplification, statements from both parties are referenced and accounted for. And I'll try to fit their statements in a cohesive form. Why rely on primary sources? I found that the more people rely on extraneous sources, the worse their understanding of the primary statements and their implications is. Extraneous sources so far have been mainly to justify the fully distrusting what one side had to say. Or worse, to justify believing it is full of malicious intent. This drama has drawn the worst in many people and a lot of it has to do with their disposition to rely on extraneous sources to reinforce their bias without giving proper thought to what was actually being stated. Right now, this sounds like an actual paper is being written, like an actual, like, uh, I don't know, a thesis is being written here. Let's take a look. This analysis will quote Ipsis Literis from the primary statements above, even at risk of being pedantic and verbose. Yeah, this person's trying to seem smart. The reason is that I found people to be unable to re remember correctly what was originally stated, which alters the meaning and implications of the statements. Some people are also unwilling to check original statement again, and express being very painful to read or watch again a source that paints whoever side they defend in a bad light as both needy sisters and the people i guess on the other side since i cannot trust people to stick to their original statements i'll be quoting those at length myself so that people don't process something through a distorted version of the statement it already seems like a defense of needy sanji i don't know it just seems like that to me the timeline was assembled in what seems to be the most likely order of the main events mentioned by both parties and the primary sources indicate events that, may pe that many people seem unaware of. The inferences from all this information are in the analytics analysis section, where I explore the scenario that emerges from them, while refraining to evaluate the likelihood yet that it is done in likelihood of the described scenario instead. The analysis section uh, focuses on the very different perspectives from the disclosure by the public and may shock many of you. The final remarks section is where I leave my thoughts and opinions after completing it all and exploring a bit on the subject that came across the making of this document, the timeline as this person describes it, well, the timeline that they see. December 24th, uh, Selene submits her music video for man to her manager for approval. December 25th, manager reports that the music video lacks proper authorization from the relevant parties, the ex-livers, and that he, she will need more time to get confirmation. December 26th, Selene publishes her music video before her manager confirmed the missing authorizations. Manager privatizes the video and asks Selen to confirm with him or her before posting anything. Selen tweets 19 minutes later asking third parties to re-upload the music video. This part um, only seemingly came out after the fact uh, and it seemed to be something, it was something directly from Niji Sanji. So it may have been uh, out of context and a way to get people on their side, people to defend them and people to see that Selen did something wrong because no context was really put there, if I remember correctly. December, they don't know when. Some livers approached Selen to ask about her handling of the last music video uh, incident, which was in the in the rat that recently happened. The leaker mentioned that there were livers that talked to her specifically, and according to what they described, in their opinion, they ganged up on her. In their opinion, they harassed her by telling her she shouldn't have done it and all grouping up on her in that situation, which could have led to her feeling extremely stressed. Again, this is according to the rat that we know of. December, Selene makes her first attempt and was hospitalized. Again, in December, Selene notifies everyone of her hospitalization. Selene's manager reaches out to her in emergency contact. Now, the hospitalization part, 
a lot of people already saw that one as a sort of skinwalking incident because we know that Nidhi Sanji in their contract says that they have control over your uh, social media and they can manage it any way they see fit. They can decide to manage it at any point in time. So we find out later, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember correctly, again, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, that she was not with her phone. She didn't have her phone during that time. She herself says she finally got access to her phone, etc. She didn't have access to her phone when all these things were happening. She didn't have access to her accounts from, of course, what we know. It may have been misinformation. We don't know. But uh, the hospitalization seems to have been a skinwalking incident. December or January, both parties can't agree on how to proceed regarding the music video incident. Nidhi Sanji's management team temporarily removes Selen's access to public accounts under the name Selen Totsky. People think that this already happened right after her asking for uh, people to uh, re-upload her stuff, re-upload the last cup of coffee music video. People think that right after there is when Nidhi Sanji started to skinwalk as her, as in using her... Uh, Public Twitter as being her is, of course, what I remember it being. December or January, Selene gets a lawyer who then handles communication with Nidhi Sanji, which was a smart thing for her to do. Uh, December or January, everyone Nidhi Sanji knows of her hospitalization and cause of it a few days before her discharge. Selene sends medical documents, therapy sessions, and doctor evaluations to prove her medical situation because they all accused her of, you know, not wanting to do work, etc. She wanted to let them know, no, it's not that I don't want to do work. It's that, you know. I am actually there. This is, again, my assumption. January, second attempt, weeks after the first. Selene's lawyer works with her on her initial document, finish reviewing her proofs of harassment, and agrees with her claims, which, you know, a lawyer will usually do when they look at everything, and if they agree with the claims, they take any risk that is involved with that as well. From my understanding, again, correct me if I'm wrong. January, Selene's lawyer prepares a set of documents with her claims against Niji Sanji, then submits them to the company to hold them legally responsible. Selene also insists that she intends to release a statement regarding her claims to the public if these negotiations negotiations do not progress. Now, this is all, of course, hearsay, I believe. And uh, she was going to release the documents, I believe, at some point later, but not if, you know, not as they are portraying this as a kind of extortion. At least it seems like it with the wording that they're putting here. They seem to make it seem like she is trying to extort Nidhi Sanji, or at least that is the feel of it that I'm getting. January question mark. Nidhi Sandy's legal team proceeds to verify the validity of Selene's claims, sharing this set of documents with her claims with relevant livers and leading to an internal investigation. So they basically doxed her at that point, or at least put out information that they should not have to other parties. And of course, Nidhi Sanji later said, that's something that we can do within our organization. We did nothing wrong. So then tries to leave Nidhi Sanji on more neutral terms in January 26th. Uh, January or February, Nidhi Sanji's legal team finishes the investigation and concludes that her claims, she refers to situations that arose from the warnings about the breaches of the activity rules and her attempts to shift responsibility for these violations and don't consider her claims valid. That is one-sided. A company can do that if they want to. It was wrong, but they can do that if they want to. Selene's lawyer on February 5th sends Selene's initial documents to Niji Sanji under a confidentiality agreement, shareable only within the legal team, after a week without negotiation talks or meetings to discuss her request to part. February 5th, Selene is terminated from Niji Sanji less than two hours after sending the confidential document without prior notice. She tweets three minutes later, denouncing the bullying and toxic environment over the months and making public her hospitalization and attempt. This answer was prepared in advance with her lawyer, and she was only aware of the termination due to a friend messaging her. At the very least, they're being fair on this one because that is true. She said she only found out when a friend let her know after she woke up, and that was wrong because... At the very least, in most situations, when you're terminated, you are given at least some sort of notice. In most VTuber agencies, from my knowledge, they do give you some sort of notice on this thing, and they didn't. So that's what started this whole debacle with Nidhi Sanji. So then reincarnates as Doki Bird and expands on the circumstances regarding her hospitalization and moments prior to her termination. Both Ilira and Doki Bird streams happen while the other is ongoing. Within a few minutes of delay, Ilira, Vox, and Ike proceed to discuss about the set of documents shown to them when Nidhi Sanji's team was conducting the internal investigation, which shouldn't have happened. They should never have sent that those documents to people in the internal area. They maybe could have said, you know, you're being accused of this and this and that. We're not going to show you the document, but this is what you're accused of. You can let us know if it's true or not. That type of thing. Even then, it probably would not have been a good investigation, but it would not have been as bad as what they actually did. 
Doki Bird says that the three were shown the document under confidentiality while their stream is ongoing. She ended up having to stop her stream. She ended up mentioning that she was super stressed about this. She got like anxiety going up the roof, through the roof because of knowing and seeing this thing happen while she is trying to have a fun stream with her with her chat and with her uh, dragoons and having moving beyond what was going on. But of course, Neji Sanji does not let that happen. Ilira mentions that these documents with Selene's claims were received over the past month, which means they had a lot of time to review this. Ilira mentions that these documents had harmful claims about personal information of some livers, and she considers those claims to be untrue. Again, we don't know because we don't know the document, but the fact that they saw the document means that um, some confidentiality was breached. Vox mentions that he thoroughly reviewed these documents and considers those claims to be untrue. According to him, the document states that Selene recorded him in secret about a year ago. It uses the recording as proof of favoritism inside Nidhi Sanji and shows him that Selene has been recording him in secret for almost a year. Now on this point, I do want to mention that Selene did uh, refute those statements and it, this is disingenuous by not putting that Selene refuted refuted the statements at least in a note somewhere so she refuted the statements she did say that they that there was a recording but it was a sound check which some people do let's see how it sounds when you're recorded let's see how it sounds on my obs let's make sure the audience can hear you correctly it's not too loud it's not too soft that type of thing she says that she pretty much recorded it just for that if i remember correctly in this part is going by memory she also mentions that she forgot she even had that recording, uh, but she did put it out there so that there would be information about that and that there would be nothing hidden. If I remember correctly, again, correct me if I'm wrong. Ike reiterates Ilira's words about the nature of the claims and says that she feels that he feels the public deserves to be aware of the existence of these documents and some of its contents. Again, I don't know why they were given the contents of the document. They were informed of it. They were put in any way, shape or form in contact with it. It should not have been that way. Doki Bird tweets that her, only her diagnosis and reason for hospital stay was disclosed. It kind of feels like she already knew that something was going to be leaked. She already knew that Nidhi Sanji couldn't be trusted fully, and she only disclosed what was medically necessary at that point. But that none of this info should have been revealed to anyone other than legal. Because in most places, you have Pepeda, if I'm not mistaken, in uh, Canada, where she's from, which protects private documents, which medical records are private documents. It protects the sharing of those documents. It can only be done under the direct written consent of the person. I believe it's not even like implied verbal or even verbal consent. It has to be actually written down consent, her signing a paper that allows them to do this. And that was not signed, of course, because she only wanted it to be put for legal February 13th. Nidhi Sandy releases a statement that the document under confidentiality wasn't shown to any livers, explains that the documents they saw were ones that were used in the internal investigation about Selene's claims, and that the documents with her claims are not under confidentiality regarding sharing it with other livers. This is pretty much like the, the, the meme, we have investigated ourselves and found that we've done nothing wrong. Of course, because of the ones doing the investigation, they are the ones that uh, have the vested interest in proving that they've done nothing wrong. This did not help their case. This did not help the public uh, persona, the public uh, consideration of them. February 14th, Doki Bird elaborates on the making of the document under confidentiality. It was originally meant to be seen by her lawyer only, not intended to be used for legal claims, and submitted to Nidhi Sanji on February 5th under a confidentiality agreement. She also discloses that she had attempted a second time a few weeks after the first attempt, and that only her family and her therapist were aware of that specific attempt. Doki Bird does mention that the document under confidentiality had no addresses or specific locations outside of her personal information. So the fact that they, that Ilira had mentioned that there was personal documents, there was personal things that put them at risk because supposedly, you know, uh, the, it was an accusing her of doxing them in that situation because he said that put them at risk. Uh, and she refutes this 100% right here. Doki Bird mentions that there was only one recording intended for distribution and test, and she did not make it under any recordings with anyone, like I mentioned before. So they do mention it a little bit further down. Should have been mentioned up here with the Lyra's words, but it was mentioned down here, at least it was mentioned. Now we move on to the analysis section. There it says two sets of documents. There are mentions that two sets of documents exist. One sent during January with Selene's legal claims against Didi Sanji, and one sent in February 5th, under confidentiality agreement. The former is a central topic with Nidhi Sanji sources, while the latter is central within Selen's statements starting 
from her February 12th streak. Now, documents sent during January with Selene's legal claims. The January documents, as he calls them. This is where he goes through that part. They go through that part, he or she. The first set of documents is related to the negotiations over Selene's claims. The termination note mentions the existence of negotiations with their claims, and Selene Totsky insisted that if the negotiations did not progress, and Selene's February 14th tweet mentions that negotiations happened in we have not heard from them for a week or any negotiations talks given a meeting to discuss after my request to part. With the negotiation talks worded to be separate from what alludes to her request to leave first, but on more neutral terms on 26th of January. These negotiations were stated to have been happening at least since the week before February 5th. So the context stated in the termination note is set. On January. Moreover, Elira mentioned in her stream that over the past month, staff received documents from Selene's lawyer containing examples of her claimed experience for under any color. And the Desanti response of February 13th further elaborates that the documents seen by the livers are specific to Selene's claims stated in the termination note. As mentioned in that stream and in the notice published by Any Color Inc., notice the termination of Selene's contract with Any Color, Selene and her lawyer claimed that livers affiliated with any color ink were involved and they will hold any color ink legally responsible in order to check the validity of selena and her lawyer's claim any color ink shared necessary parts of the information sent by her lawyer with our livers and that led to an internal investigation and therefore tied to these negotiation this sets a lyric statement in the context of the document being sent during january niti sandy directly states that these documents were not under confidentiality Again, according to Nidhi Sanji, uh, Selene refutes that statement and says they were meant to be confidential. And the lawyer told her that she sent that they sent them as a confidential document. To begin with, any color has not made any confidenti confidentiality violations regarding submitted documents for legal claims such as these. And it seems to be the case either Selene's claims would not be mentioned in the termination note if the documents with her claims were confidential or Selene would have denounced the confidentiality breach. A week later, pointing out the claims in the termination note, Selene's statements don't indicate that any, another document other than the one sent on February 5th was confidential either. And Niti Sanji mentions in the February 13th response that Selene's lawyer only requested confidentiality for specific information and documents, not for all of them regarding specific information and documents, which Selene's lawyer requested that we do not share with our libraries. This is a big, long statement trying to clear Niti Sanji of any wrongdoing, but the fact is from... What we know, they shared the, the whole document and we don't know anything other than that. It just really seems like it's a he said, she said thing. But I tend to trust Doki Bird a little bit more on the whole thing because Doki Bird has not made any false or misleading statements recently. She is the victim in this whole thing. So I tend to believe the victim in this case, especially when there's so much documentation behind what the victim is saying. I tend to believe that. The January documents had some of their contents described during Lyra's stream, stating that Selene had not only presented her claims, but also that she possesses personal information of other livers that she was not expected to have. According to Lyra, these documents included personal information of some livers. According to Lyra, I really don't think she had that. Um, I don't think that she would release that type of information even in a legal notice because that can make her liable for, you know, releasing, uh, confidential documents. It poses a risk to our personal safety and puts some of us at risk of doxing. And one section of this document alludes to where Millie and I live. So the alluding to where Millie and her live could just say they reside in Canada. They reside in a certain province. It may not be even directly, oh, they live in this and this house, in this and this place. It could just be they live in a specific province, which as far as I am concerned, a lot of people already know that Millie is in Canada. If I'm mistaken, again, correct me if I'm wrong but that is well known already in the community. She also states that there are also harmful claims Selene made in a document about some livers' personal information. Meaning that some of Selene's claims revolved around the personal information uh, of Nidhi Sanji livers rather than adding those as complementary information for procedural reasons. This is a big assumption on this person's part, as it's also an assumption of mine that there was no uh, really leading information, really deep information of doxing or any of that sort maybe just that they're all Canadian citizens. They all live in a certain province, maybe even not even that far, maybe just the Canadian citizens part. Other contents in the January documents are Selene's accusations of being bullied and harassed, which Fox states as being framed around the disagreements with management and how other livers approached her in regards to her subsequent public statements. Myself and some other livers decided to approach Selene and ask about her handling of the latest situation. From what the leaker, the person doing the rats recently, 
mentioned, this was a lot more than just one or two livers. It was a large group of livers that were giving her grief about the situation, which made her stress, which was her cover being made private. So some livers, myself included, asked Selene why she tweeted about the cover in the way that she did, expressing that we felt it was unnecessary and harmful. According to Selene's lawyer, it is this event they claim to be a buildup of and what they claim to be a buildup of past experiences that led to accusations made by Selene that she was bullied and harassed. So yes, this one was not only one, it wasn't only Lyra going there, it wasn't only Vox going there. From what she says on her end, uh, at least on the end of the person leaking the information, from what the person who leaked it says, it was a large group of livers. So large group meaning more than like two or three. Lastly, Vox mentions that in these documents, it is stated that Selene said secretly recorded me in a private voice call without my knowledge or consent, and that based on this document, Selene had wanted to use this as proof of staff showing favoritism for some members over others. I think this is a big leap. I don't, I don't know the document. I haven't seen the document, so I wouldn't know anything. But it just seems like a leap on his part. Maybe some gaslighting. Uh, there's a rat going around on this end of some Niji Sanji uh, enjoyers, some Niji Sanji sisters, as they're called. Uh, some Vox kindred saying that it really sounded like his gaslighting voice. I don't know what that means, but apparently he has a gaslighting voice. From what I remember, some people mentioning, again, take that with a grain of salt because that could just be very well be a rat. That could be someone LARPing as someone else, and we don't know 100%. Fox also mentions that not only recorded me in secret, but also that these recordings were held without my knowledge for almost an entire year. But he doesn't specify the documents to show that multiple recordings were held. He doesn't specify if the documents show that or if he concluded that Selene would keep recording him since he only previously mentioned. So this may be a large assumption on his part, may not actually be uh, with any type of proof or any type of actual merit. Selene has not made any direct statements about this set of documents, neither acknowledging nor denying its existence. Document under confidentiality sent on February 5th. So this is the next section. This document is first mentioned by Selene during a February 12th stream. There was a signed doc, there was a signed legal consent between me and the management that it was just going to be between me, my lawyer, and management. She later stated that this document was meant to dis document my thoughts and history with evidence so that my lawyer can see the general picture of what was going on and that there were issues that should be addressed. And that she made the document thinking it would never be going public to anyone but my lawyer. That means the document was not intended to be used for legal claims and likely served as a sketch for future documents and actions. That's what she did say. That is true. So then also stated that this document contains her personal and medical information because a document is also private information regarding me. My medical history and my medical documents are in everything that me, my lawyer, and other people that were involved with it all signed and agreed upon. This document is stated to not contain other addresses or specific locations mentioned, which indirectly refers to a Lyra statement alludes to where Millie and I live. So yeah, it didn't have any other personal information. So then also mentions about a recording of the same tweet saying it was not intended to be anything other than a distribution test for planning of a collaborative event between the two people. So she does mention it there. She mentions that it was just kind of like a sound test. It was a test to make sure everything was right. That I never recorded any other combination conversations with anyone and that the recording was never shown anywhere, even in, the, in a legal setting. And there are no other records. Note, though, that her wording doesn't directly link this recording to a particular document. It is implied that it is on this document, uh, the document that was mentioned before. Selene also states the recording. However, I regret that it was mentioned and that I'm sorry to all parties affected for the misunderstanding in this. At least, she, you know, she apologized for that, indicating that she considers Vox's points about the secret recordings over an almost a year to be fruit of a misunderstanding. And I tend to agree because if it's just a test to see how things are going, I've done those before. Uh, I don't let people know that, you know, I've, I've done the test, but I also delete them. So it's like, see, if you're going to be doing a collab, you assume that your voice is going to be recorded at some point. You don't have to get consent for like directly being like, oh, can I do this? Uh, okay, you can do this. People know that you're going to be doing tests. People know that that is never going to go public because I delete every single test after this. It was just a mistake for her not to delete those tests, in my opinion. I don't think it's a bad thing. Correct me if I'm wrong again in the comments. I don't see that. I see this as a nothing burger when it comes to, oh, she did this or she did that. This document was not used for legal claims. As stated by Selene, my lawyer discussed and said it would be best to show this document. I wrote to the other lawyers and as we have not heard from them for a week or any negotiation talks or given a meeting to discuss after my request to part. It was never intended to be used for anything else. 
I've asked my lawyer to convey that. So while it was stated to contain history with evidence, the evidence presented in it would not have been listed or used in her claims against Didi Sanji for this particular document. It seemed just to kind of give Nidhi Sanji an idea of what was going on and to kind of just, you know, have communication between the two. Nidhi Sanji acknowledges that this confidential, confidential document exists, but denies that it is among the documents they covered during a Lyra stream, although it does seem to kind of have that point. So uh, actions are really... Uh, you know, going against the word that they're saying regarding the specific information and documents which the lens lawyer requested that we do not share with our livers with utmost consideration of this request any color ink has not shared such information again it all goes to if they can be trusted or not we don't know fully if they can be trusted or not so we went like i went on the assumption that maybe some things were shared and so did many others and that's why I'm reading this to give you a different perspective to at least let you see both sides of the story. You may not agree with this. I certainly do not at this point, but let's just keep going because both sides need to be heard. You need to be as objective as you possibly can. Take all the information you have and then make a decision. That's the way I see it, at least. That's the way I'm trying to be. His conflict of narrative emerges on February 12th during a Lira stream while Nidhi Sanji sources state that the documents uh, dis discussed by Alira, Vox, and Ike refer to the set of documents sent over January. So then brings up that they had been see they had seen the confidential document sent on February 5th instead. And that's what worried her. That's what got her the huge spike in anxiety, the huge, you know, whole thing that was going on, which didn't seem right on my end. Nidisandi stated, as mentioned in the stream and in the notice published by Any Color Inc., notice the termination of Selene Totsky's contract with Any Color, Selene and her lawyer claimed that livers affiliated with Any Color were involved and that they will hold Any Color legally responsible as well as in order to check the validity of Selene and lawyer's claim, Any Color Inc. shared the necessary parts of the information sent by her lawyer with our livers and an internal investigation was, was conducted. In their February 13th response, linking the documents discussed by Alira and others to the doc to the negotiations of her legal claims mentioned in the termination note. So they tried to absolve themselves of what happened there. And uh, this person is, seems to be putting this out there just so you know you can see both sides. It really doesn't seem like there's really a need to at this point, but let's keep going. The first time Selene mentions that Elira and the others had saw the confidential document is during the Neopet stream. Regarding a document, there was a signed legal, there was a signed doc, there was a signed legal consent between the management that it was just going to be between me, my lawyer, and management. But the fact that they released that to others is considered illegal because that was not supposed to be seen by anyone else. And it was signed by me, my lawyer, and other lawyers. Selene also talks about the confidential document in her follow-up tweets with her February 14th tweet saying, although it was a document filled with my personal information as well as privacy information that should not be public, there were no other addresses or specific locations mentioned. So the only places that she mentioned was, were her actual location herself, indirectly referring to a Lyra statement that the documents alludes to where Millie and I live. So there were no addresses, there were no really incriminating areas of like, oh, someone can dox you easily through this. That was what made people think that Lyra's uh, statements were manipulation. They were emotional manipulation. They were manipulation in every sense of the word. That's what people started thinking about that once they heard Selene's side. When attempt to conciliate, to conciliate both narratives, at least initially, is to assume that Niji Sanji was using only the January documents and Selene just made a mistake during her Neopet stream. The idea is that since she had not actually seen Elira's stream yet, she would have jumped to conclusions. However, this doesn't explain why she would still refer to the confidential document on February 13th. It was requested that none of this info should be revealed to anyone other than legal. And the 14th, have communications that the document as it was written wasn't going to be released anywhere. And my lawyer did so when sending the document. Another attempt to conciliate both narratives would be to assume that both sets of documents were used by Alira and others. But Nidhi Sanji's response openly denies that. Of course, they're going to deny that because one of them is confidentiality and, you know, that's what a lot of people started thinking. I'm just giving you the, the the way the community thought at that point. A lot of people were like, you know, why would she be saying these things if it's not true? In the sense of why would she be putting out there that these things were confidential if it wasn't true? And of course, at that point, people were like, Niti Sanji's trying to cover their butts. And of course they would because anyone would under these situations, especially if you have to face something like Pepeta or other privacy concerns, even in your own country. Regarding the specific information and documents which the Lens lawyer requested that we do not share with our livers, with the utmost consideration of this request, any color ink has not shared any such information. According to themselves, we will never know because we just go and buy what other people are saying in the sense of the uh, Illyra stream and what uh, uh, Selene is saying, but I tend to believe a little bit more on Selene's side. Overall, it seems impossible to conciliate with their narratives because it does 
you know, devolve into a he said, she said type of situation, which is never good because you can never really know the full truth because each side has their own truths involved in this. And it is, it muddies the waters a lot. But um, I will just say on my end, I tend to believe Selene a little bit more because she's being very open about the things. And uh, Nidhi Sanji seems to be speaking out of both sides of their mouth a little bit. That's the way it seems from my end, at least. You can disagree. And of course, let me know in the comments. The scenario in which that January document exists doesn't leave a clear reason for Selene to conclude that her confidential document was leaked. For that, she would need to find Illyra and others mentioning information that is not present in the January documents. This means accusations and evidence are not clues for that. The distinct information that Selene mentions of the confidential document are her personal and medical information. If Belira and others discussed any of these that weren't already prior uh, of prior or public knowledge, then we would have an indication of a leak. My guess is that uh, the fact that any information was shared was not uh, liked by Selene, was not supposed to be happening because those are documents only for legal. And it really does seem like Niji Sanji messed up on this end because they should not have released any of that information according to what Selene understands and according to what I understand uh, in general, unless they're specifically mentioned, not just other livers, unless someone is specifically mentioned in a document as a defendant, then that is when they get to be informed of this. If it's just general idea of things, then no, they don't get to be informed of this. As far as I am knowing, I am not a lawyer. Let me know below if you are a lawyer and you disagree with what I just said. There are only two potential mentions of that. One where Lyra mentions the son's hospitalization. Once she notified all of us regarding the hospitalization, we immediately reached out to her, each other, and her manager to confirm her safety. That looks like maybe it's a bit of a cover. Who knows? And Vox mentioning briefly that her attempt on her life will never be something that can be taken lightly. Of course, he's going to say that. Both instances do not expand on the information that Selene already made public on the two separate instances, though on her termination response tweet on December, I was hospitalized for an attempt and on a return stream, I was in the hospital for an attempt and I provided medical documents of everything that happened to prove it. Furthermore, Elira mentioned that Selene notified everyone of her hospitalization once she notified all of us regarding the hospitalization. That was the quote. And Selene later stated that everyone knew I was in the hospital and the reason behind it a few days before I was discharged. During her se February 7th return stream, so it seems that Illyra and the other livers were already aware of those events from Selene herself and before the confidential document was sent to Niji Sanji. Now, here's my, way my take on this part. The issue wasn't that they knew that she was hospitalized. The issue was that she released certain things to them, letting them know maybe she was hospitalized and that was it, uh, but didn't put down her specific medical diagnosis, her specific therapist diagnosis, which would fall under Pipetta. It would fall under over here, HIPAA in the United States. It would fall under all those privacy protections because those are actual medical diagnosis, which is a very private act. I did not find any other potential information that could only be known through confidential document. So far, there of Vox and Ike seem to have discussed only contents expected from the January documents. If this set of documents exist, then it's not clear why Selene would conclude that they had access to the confidential document. So either the set of documents from January doesn't exist or Selene's accusation regarding the confidential document is false. That is a bit of a stretch here, especially from someone like myself. They are in the same shoes that I am. They're just going by the information that's out there. The information is, of course, in many cases, confidential, and it will not be shown to anybody. It will not be uh, disclosed to anybody outside of what is going on, outside of the, the legal parties involved. That's why she even mentioned, I believe, in a lot of the streams where she mentioned these things, that she talked to her lawyer before mentioning any of this on stream to make sure it was okay to mention it in the legal sense. And it was it would not hurt her if any case does pop up from my re recollection. Again, you could correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Now, here is extortion during negotiations. That is, this is a harsh uh, language here. It seems like it's going to be a harsh thing against the Len. We don't know 100%, but this already kind of paints a harsh narrative on the whole thing. The negotiations over Selene's claims did not seem to occur under normal circumstances. There is a worrisome statement in the termination note. Selene Toski insisted that if negotiations did not progress, she would proceed to release a statement regarding her claims to the public. As worded, Selene's actions constitute extortion and, from what I would, could gather, fall as such under the criminal code of both Canada and Japan. This is a huge leap. This is one of the biggest leaps that this person has made during this document. And I kind of had a feeling that this is where they were going. But let's see how this plays out, Cotton, so to speak.
Let's see how this plays out. As referenced that this would indeed be seen as a case of extortion in a court of law, there's an example analogous to Selene's case from an American criminal defense law firm, Grimes and Warwick. It is posted in their articles, The Accidental Extortionist, When Negotiation Becomes Extortion, link there, which elaborates on the risk of extortion during negotiations. The example in question is quoted below. I think extortion is pretty much a, too strong of a word in this situation, and I think it would be left to the uh, interpretation of the side uh, that is dealing with this whole thing. So that is my take on it, at least. I'm not a lawyer, like I said. I wouldn't know, you know, legally if this could be seen as extortion, but it, it just, on an anecdotal sense, it doesn't seem like it would be. For example, in one case we handled, a litigant in a business dispute sent an email informing Mr. X, the opposing party, that if Mr. X did not agree to a proposed settlement of, of the litigation by a given date, a list of Mr. X's sexual, per oh God, Picad Picadillos? Picadillos? would be distributed to his neighbors and his wife. That was a clear-cut case of extortion, and the writer of the email was prosecuted. Of course, Dana M. Grimes. That is clear-cut uh, extortion, because that is basically, you don't do this, you're going to get this, this happening to you. That's a clear case of extortion. So he's putting out the clear case of extortion. Let's see what he goes on further. The possibility of extortion has massive implications. The first of them, that the scenario reframes Illyra's stream. The public has so far taken her expression of fear. I felt threatened and scared of speaking about it in a situation because of the risk that it could pose to not just my own safety, but the safety of those around me as well. We learned that we were that there was a potential that this information could be made public. Some of the information poses a risk to our personal safety and puts some of us at risk during doxing. As unreasonable as they thought it was about the documents being sent to court and publicized as a result, we now have to consider that the fear may have come from being a victim of extortion. That again is a humongous stretch. That is Wow, that's a big stretch here. Let's see how that goes. Let's see how it continues going. Moreover, people have wondered why the Livers did a PR stream if Tazami was already going to do a PR pronouncement later on. Make it a Lyra stream redundant. In, in, in the extortion scenario, her stream has a very different purpose from Tazami's pronouncement. Instead of being a regular PR attempt, the stream is instead one where the victims of extortion speak out against their experience. Additionally, we've been told that there will also be a video releasing regarding the situation from Tazami-san directly a few hours following the stream. But what we say on the stream is our own words and our own feelings, according to them. A lot of people don't agree that it's their own feelings. They felt that they were being forced to do this. Who knows? Because uh, Nidhi Sanji can kind of tell you what you can do according to the contract, where you can stream, what you can stream, all that kind of stuff. And defend from Selene having carried out her threat. This is, again, a huge, huge leap and also a huge assumption. Uh, this is where he kind of discredits himself a little bit, in my opinion. Because uh, before he was trying to seem, you know, in the middle, maybe. Well, of course, leaning more towards Nidhi Sanji's side from everything he was saying. Now he's fully on Nidhi Sanji's side, making Nidhi Sanji and Illyra, Vox, and Ike as the victims of what he calls an extortion. Illyra's stream as a whole makes more sense in this scenario. The contents of the stream mix their take on Selene's claim of bullying and how hurt and terrified the livers were when seeing the documents, which seem unrelated at first. A defense from legal claims wouldn't need frequent mentions of the latter. In fact, many have interpreted this mix of, as either slander or manipulation. In context of extortion, however, intimidation is at the center of what they experienced, and Selene followed it up with a threat, threatened accusation of bullying. As such, both topics are expected to be presented together. The context of extortion ties both topics coherently. It also explains why Alira opens a stream, emphasizing on the emotional personal aspect of the situation. Due to how sensitive the situation is, both the livers and the company have been affected deeply or is based solely on our personal experiences, what we say on the stream on our own words and our own feelings. That whole personal emotional thing, this person's taking it as meaning uh, that they were extorted, they were being fear of being extorted, they were fear of their personal stuff coming out. Others have taken it as them trying to manipulate emotionally the, the group that's going to be watching this and uh, manipulate emotionally anybody who is watching it whether it be from whatever side that's what that's the way many uh, commentators i believe myself i took that as step as well this scenario also clarifies something peculiar in the termination of affiliation contract section of the termination note the first four paragraphs have quick change of position the first paragraph says we express to selene our expectations for future compliance with the activity rules from here on indicating that they were initially wanted to continue working with her while the fourth paragraph has a threat to the ongoing activities of other affiliated livers for why her termination was unavoidable. In between this drastic escalation, we have the second paragraph stating Selene extorted Nidhi Sanji when demanding to hold them legally responsible. Well, that's a jump. That's more of a jump of what this person is saying. 
And the third paragraph, disagreeing with Selene's claims, meaning the negotiations would not progress from Nidhi Sanji's end on free will. This points to Nidhi Sanji abruptly terminating Selene due to her extorting them, as well as due to the danger that she consequently represented to other livers, rather than for any other reason conceived so far. Again, a bit of a stretch, in my opinion. Another implication is that the scenario puts Selene's intentions into question. For instance, Selene had stated on February 7th, return stream that I had to respond with the truth when it all did went out and that I'm still me and they can never really take that away. However, extortion involves using an information, whether true or false as a weapon and being in a position of power and control over the other party. Instead, in this scenario, Selene's primary intention with her statement of bullying would not be exposed or wrongdoing, but to punish Nidhi Sanji for resisting her attempts at intimidation and acquiescing to her demands. So again, this is assuming that everything that Selene is doing is a punitive way. It's meant to punish. It's meant to harm. It's meant to do damage. Instead of defending herself from accusations that popped out with the, the Nidhi Sanji document, the fact that Nidhi Sanji does make punitive documents themselves. We saw that with Zion Lanza's document, the the... the termination document with her where they did a laundry list of things a bullet point list of things uh and we saw it again with selene where they did you know not necessarily a bullet list in that case but they did try to smear her as much as they could more severe in this scenario though is the intent behind selene bringing up the confidential document and framing illyra stream under the context of leaking the document the extortion scenario involves negotiation of selene's claims with these happening during January, hence the documents that Alira and others saw would have been January documents, not the one sent on February 5th. And explored in the conflicting narratives, which set of documents was discussed in Alira's stream, subsection, Selene would not have a clear reason to conclude that Alira's stream covered the confidential document instead of January documents. This leaves a void on what her intent is when insisting on the confidential document. This is all assuming that uh, the February document was not the one shown, which... Uh, Nidhi Sanji can't really prove one way or the other. We can't prove one way or the other. But some of the things that they mentioned leaves us to believe that they saw the confidential document. The whole being afraid of, you know, the information being sent out, being afraid of doxing, being afraid that their, the location of where they live has been shared, you know, that type of stuff. One concerning possibility in the scenario, Selen wanting to deny Elira and others from having their experience of being extortion heard, and accomplishing that by distracting the public towards a subject unrelated to negotiations, aka suspended leak of the confidential information. Supposed leak. Supposed leak. This would make sense as after attention towards a negotiation carries the risk of someone realizing that Nidhi Sanji called her extortion in the termination note, which she would want to hide. This is assuming uh, that Selene is the bad one. Again, you can already see where this is going. If she actually brought up the confidential document with its intent, then her action incriminates herself on the other ends. As this omission altering of context matches the pattern that Vox described during Elira's stream, the screenshots regarding Selene's tweet after privatization of her last music video, that this pattern of events had happened before on multiple occasions, this actually did not make them look good. It actually made them look bad in everybody's eyes, including myself. Why would they have to share that? And it also shows that uh, Niji Sanji is incompetent in the way that they go through uh, acceptances and go through approvals and everything like that, it did not really help their case. And Vox's previous experience on being solid uh, solidarity with her stating, because I trusted her so much and I listened to her narrative of half or untruths about a relationship with any color, this caused me so much anger on her behalf that I had considered graduating with her in solidarity. Seriously, I don't, I, this is a personal note. I don't believe that one bit. And I now know that my intense feelings at the time came from an omitted context and falsehoods. Again, trying to paint her as the bad guy, trying to paint her in a very negative light. Uh, I don't really agree with this aspect of it. I think a lot of people who have read what is going on and have seen what has gone on don't really agree with this aspect of it. Another implication on the, is on legal matters. As extortion is a serious criminal offense, so then would be prosecuted by a state instead of dealing with a lawsuit between her and Nidhi Sanji. And the nature of the charge changes a lot with legal specifics, such as anonymity and penalties. These specifics are beyond the scope of this analysis, which focuses on the statements between Selen and Nidhi Sanji. I suggest looking for details on this legal matter elsewhere. Likelihood of the described scenario. This first sentence here, the likelihood that Selen extorted Nidhi Sanji is high. I already let you know what side this person is on. It lets you know what, uh, what biases they have, what preconceived notions they have, 
uh, the fact that they're trying to defend Idi Sanji in this whole scenario without any of the information other than circumstantial information and anecdotal information and things like that. They even tried to use a, a legal document about actual extortion to say that this was accidental extortion in negotiations. And they are taking uh, Elira's words and Idi Sanji's written words as gospel and not as a company or a person trying to defend themselves uh, against uh, public backlash which is what I think went on. The Sandy correctly predicted that Selene would follow up with a public statement with the claims listed in the termination note. She claimed that she was no longer able to engage in her activities as a liver due to decisions made by any color, was being harassed by other affiliated livers due to mismanagement, etc. She would proceed to release a statement regarding her claims to the public. Yeah, she will do that if you don't fix it because, of course, you want others to know what's going on. Especially if you end up leaving or you end up getting terminated or whatever. You want your side to be shown. And right here it shows really that Nidhi Sanji didn't want her side to be shown. From my opinion again. Bullying from within being uh, within and being in a toxic and poor environment. This means that they were warned in advance about the course of action and there's no clear alternative source for this warning other than Selene and her lawyer. Moreover, Selene later stated later during her February 7th return stream that I had a statement made in advance which my lawyer helped edit in case it did happen and that I wouldn't have made the statement if the announcement didn't go up the way it did. So she knew that she was going to be slandered. She knew that she was going to be uh, misrepresented in this whole thing. And of course, she wanted to make a defense document that would at least help other people see her side of it. This is an extortion. This is a defense of yourself, which I absolutely agree with. And I have no issue with establishing that her action was both premeditated and conditional again they are prescribing malice to something that is just a simple wanting to defend herself these factors are important for a threat to constitute extortion and were also predicted by Nidhi Sanji if it was so such a strong and such an easy case of extortion I'm pretty sure Nidhi Sanji would have actually gone against her even in Canada there would have been uh, let's say Alira and Millie being Canadian citizens they would have had a chance to be able to do the same thing if they felt that there was extortion going on if they felt that some they were being damaged in some way that was not done so I have a feeling that this person is just grasping at straws these two factors constitute circumstantial proof for the extortion case very circumstantial a scenario that assumes Nidhi Sanji lied and made up about the extortion has to offer an alternative explanation for how then Nidhi Sanji knew that Selene had a conditional public statement planned in advance because she told them about it. And, you know, she said that, you know, if you guys try to, you know, say negative things about me, if you guys try to lie, I'm going to say the truth. That's it. It's not like do this or I'm going to do that. It's more like, I know you guys lie. I know you guys tend to stretch the truth because of what happened with Zion and others, I'm going to make sure that my truth is able to be out there in case if you guys post something else, which is exactly what Zion did, uh, Sayu, you know, not known as Sayu, did with hers because they let out a lot of half-truths and a lot of lies. So she had to make like a 20-something page document where she let out her actual truth. And this is what Selene was saying as well, not extorting, in my opinion again. And what the contents were going to be, that doesn't involve Selene and her lawyer stating the threat. The primary sources don't offer an alternative explanation for that. So this guy is just grasping at straws. Yes, there's no alternative explanation for that. So he went for the worst possible explanation, the most damaging to Selene and the most evil and conniving explanation that you can find that she wanted to do this for evil intent to extort somebody. That's what you go for. That just doesn't seem that doesn't seem like a faithful way of saying it. That doesn't seem like a fair and balanced way of saying it. The testimonies given on a Lyra stream reinforce the extortion scenario. As explored in extortion during negotiation subsection, a lyric stream makes far more sense in the extortion context than in a regular PR stream context taken by the public at large, indicating that the latter is missing some vital information. There's a lot of information uh, out there that we don't know, so a lot of these suppositions are made just based on the person's own personal standing and own personal beliefs on this whole thing. That is why I wanted it out there because I wanted to show you what one side really sees on this whole thing. I'm trying to be objective uh, with this but I'm also trying to also show you the other side, show you the side of the Niji Sandi defenders and explain the side that the Selene defenders would have you, you know, would put out there as well. Fears also explicitly expressed by the two streamers. I felt threatened and scared speaking out about the situation because of the risk you could pose a threat, not only to my own safety, but the safety of those around me as well. That to me, like I said, seemed more like emotional manipulation, trying to make themselves seem like the weaker party, even though they are protected by Niji Sanji. And they are the party that affected her and actually hurt her. 
private information that is very terrifying to have being, you know, see, shown before you like that. So that means this part shows that they were possibly shown the February 5th document, possibly shown confidential information, because why would she put that in a January document? She would have to put that in a confidential document that was later shared to the livers, which is showing that there are lies being told by Nidhi Sanji on the whole, oh yeah, we didn't show it, show it to anybody type of thing, which is not an expected emotion in a regular negotiation and points that something was eerily unusual about its circumstances. This is an indication of a potential extortion as far as testimony goes. And let's see what this guy's final remarks are. Final remarks of this person. Thank you for reading this this far. And this is the work I've done alone over multiple days, revisions, a considerable amount of thought. Why spend so much time around this subject? Because I need to organize what I knew of the presented events to properly understand their implications. And I couldn't trust that others would be able to pay attention to the primary sources beyond a surface level, even at that. Merely a lyric saying that the documents were received over the past month, while Selene states that the documents were sent as February 5th, should have been enough to spark a serious discussion on whether they were even talking about the same document. I don't know. That's a, that's a stretch as well, I'd say. The point about extortion or blackmail, depending on the state in question, came as a surprise as it was definitely not what I was expecting to come across when I started this. It took a while to realize that this particular line and termination note was a case of extortion and look for legal aspects of that. It seems that most developed countries place extortion slash blackmail as among the most serious crimes in the statute. From what I read, it falls as a felony the most serious category of a crime on most American states, Canada seems to take it even more harshly as being indictable offense, roughly their equivalent of a felony, with life imprisonment as the maximum penalty. That would have to be probably some serious stuff, not just regular run-of-the-mill extortion, even though it's run-of-the-mill extortion sounds kind of weird to say. And the English sources I found re regarding Japan's criminal law for extortion often mention it being applied mainly to prosecute members of a mafia, largely the Yakuza. None of this paint a good image for Selene in that scenario. That's again, assuming this is extortion. This person already made the assumption it's extortion because of the things that were said by Alira and were said by Nidhi Sanji. Took it more as like they were trying to defend themselves from extortion instead of they were trying to paint Selene as a bad person. So they're already an unfaithful narrator at this point. So is Nidhi Sanji and so is Alira, in my opinion. So I don't take this as extortion, in my opinion again. The theory on its morality isn't pet pretty either. Restriction of freedom of choice, potential to ruin someone's life, mental distress that can persist for many years after the threat, usurpation of one's discretionary authority regarding disregard for one's free will, and analogies with theft and fraud. It's no surprise that then extortion laws are developed in country in developed countries tend to be especially harsh. UK courts have described it as attempted murder of the soul and one of the most serious and vicious offenses in the criminal calendar. At the end, the conclusion leans towards Len extorting Nidhi Sanji and trying to hide it from the public. Her mentions of confidential document in particular have indications of being a trickery. That's again, just seeing it from a particular lens, not trying to look at it from a just a middle of the ground lens. They're really, really just seeing trickery. That shows already the side that they're on. Possibly me meant to deny her extortion victims from being heard. If the scenario indeed proves to be true, that the reaction of the EN community at large has been completely misguided and messed up, to put it mildly. As of the moment I'm writing this, I have not seen this scenario discussed among English speakers. I hope from this perspective that I added here have been in insightful to you and made you re-examine the approach this whole situation of this whole situation, whichever your position has been during this drama. I don't think the extortion thing has any merit. That's why it hasn't been explained by people like Legal Mindset or others. Uh, I'm pretty sure Legal Mindset would have picked up on this pretty quickly. He's a lawyer, so he probably would have, you know, been like, oh, this sounds like extortion. This doesn't sound like extortion. I'm pretty sure he's going to cover this as well. Uh, but this is my take on it. Um, I don't think they have the legal basis for extortion. I don't think either Elira, Millie, or even Nidhi Sanji have that, which is why they haven't gone against Elira either in Japan. I mean, Elira. Uh, Selene, either in Japan, or Selene in Canada, which they could have because they could have standing in there because of the fact that they are an aggrieved party. So it doesn't hit hard. It doesn't make sense. This document seems to have just been written by somebody who wanted to have a little bit of an experiment and uh, wanted to push a narrative of extortion on the part of Selene. You let me know what you think. You already have heard what I think about the whole thing. I think it is just not, it doesn't have any actual basis. The fact that they think that Selene slash Bird actually tried to extort uh, a favorable outcome 
from Niji Sanji. So of course, comment down below. Let me know what you think. I want to know what you think, what I got wrong, what I should fix, any of that kind of stuff. Let me know down below. Uh, my socials are down there as well. And there should be a video popping up for you to enjoy here. I hope that you, uh, this was informative and I hope that you enjoyed this. Have a wonderful day, afternoon, morning, whichever one it is in your area and take care of yourself. Bye-bye.